What's good, everybody? It's Todd Smith from the No Gimmicks Podcast. You're probably asking yourself, hey, why aren't we seeing Todd? Why aren't we hearing him this week? Where's Joe? Where's Dale? Well, unfortunately, the No Gimmicks Podcast is going under some changes currently. Due to scheduling conflicts, Joe Majerski is no longer going to be a part of the No Gimmicks Podcast. Joe, we appreciate all your efforts, and it's been a pleasure working with you, my friend. Also, this past week here, we lost a legend in the sport of professional boxing, whom also had an effect on the world of professional wrestling. Muhammad Ali passed away at the age of 74 this past weekend. Muhammad Ali actually was such a pioneer, he didn't even realize that he created the first mixed martial arts bout when him and Antonio Noki went head to head in a contest in Japan back in the late 1970s. Muhammad Ali also popularized a lot of the catchphrases which we hear from some of the wrestlers today, such as John Cena, the champ is here. Ernest the Cat Miller from WCW, when he used to say, somebody better call my mama, guess where he got that from? Muhammad Ali, a champion inside and outside the ring who will be dearly missed. Also, other huge news, outside of professional wrestling in the sport of Miss Martial Arts, which also carries over to the WWE, Brock Lesnar has announced that he will be competing at UFC 200. The opponent has not been named yet, but it will definitely be interesting in keeping us on the edge of our seats as we try to figure out who he's going to face at the next UFC pay-per-view. Also, we had a return. John Cena, who's been absent from the WWE for several months now, he returned from his injury and had a confrontation with AJ Styles. AJ Styles, lo and behold, reforms his trio with Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, the club, and they just completely obliterated John Cena, giving him a proverbial welcome home, John Cena, back to the WWE. Also, this past week in the WWE, we have the announcement of the brand split, which is coming up in, in the month of July. The brand split is going to create a lot of opportunities for guys from NXT to be called up to the main roster. It also would give us the opportunity to see split world champions once again, something that we have not seen in several years in the WWE. Who knows what this, what this is going to um, hold for the future of the WWE and who will be in control of each brand. Now a little bit about this past week's episode of TNA Impact. So, Ethan Carter III, aka EC3, was given control of the show for an evening. He decided to make life a living hell on both the Miracle Mike Bennett and his wife Maria Kanellis. Miracle Mike Bennett was actually relegated to toilet duty, a job that was described by EC3 as the... Yeah, I don't think I need to continue the rest of that phrase. You guys can fill in the blanks there. They have a show on Pop, which actually has the name in its title. Wink, wink. Maria Kanellis actually was forced to sit at ringside next to, um, to Ethan Carter III, almost like a little girl on timeout during some of the women's matches as well. We also saw Bobby Lashley face off against the Chesterfield play, Bram. At the conclusion of the match, Eli Drake came out and decided to take advantage of the situation and cash in his King of the Mountain opportunity. He went on to win the King of the Mountain title, yet him and Bram are scheduled for a rematch at the Slammiversary pay-per-view coming up soon. Speaking of Slammiversary, there's going to be a full Metal Mayhem match featuring both Jeff and Matt Hardy. This is quite a strange storyline which they have going on in Impact currently between Matt, Jeff, and his wife, Matt's wife that is, Reby Sky has gotten involved in things, even little Matzel in some way or another was involved in this angle. Needless to say, it all concluded with Jeff getting put through a table via Matt Hardy, off the ring apron, via a side effect. It should be interesting to see what kind of an effect that this will have on the future of the Hardys in TNA. Also, we saw the, couple, the introduction of a couple former NXT talents, both Baron Dats and Basil Baraka. Baron Dats and Basil Baraka were formerly known as Sylvester Lafort and Marcus Louis over in NXT. They are now going to be serving as protégés for Al Snow, known as the Tribunal. It should be interesting to see how this whole thing goes down between these three and Grotto and Mahabali Shara, who are kind of known as the new generation over there in TNA. Now on to my favorite weekly wrestling program. Yeah, for those of you who have followed the No Gimmicks podcast so far, you know what that is. Time for some Lucha Underground. So this past week on Lucha Underground, we saw two spectacular matches. 
The first being a trios match involving Rey Mysterio Jr., Dragon Azteca Jr., and Prince Puma versus Jack Evans, PJ Black, and Johnny Mundo, who had Taya on their side. This match here, it just continues to amaze me how much action and how much fast-paced, non-stop moves that these guys continue to break down on a weekly basis. And each week, I'm always surprised. I see something that I haven't seen done before. That tilt-to-whirl DDT that Dragon Azteca is using that defies the laws of gravity, he needs to continue to use that because that just continually draws a pop from the crowd and it gets a pop from me as well. I never cease to amaze by the action out of these guys. Unfortunately, for the trio of Puma, Rey Mysterio, and Dragon Azteca Jr., they came up short on things because the Hills used some heel tactics and when Puma tried to retaliate by the proverbial nut shot to one of those guys, it wound up that they got disqualified because the ref didn't quite pay attention to what was going on. So, we also saw a main event between the Machine Cage and the monster Matanza Cueto. Matanza Cueto coming down looking like a cross between Jason Voorhees, aka Uber Jason from Friday the 13th, um, part 10 I believe it was. Also a combination of, um, of Michael Myers via Halloween. Second into the ring by his brother Dario Cueto. This match just absolutely blew me away. I have not seen Cage break open his moveset like he did this past week. I'm talking about this guy is doing planches. He's doing moonsaults. He's doing sick running, you know, net breaker uh, combinations. And then Matanza himself, this guy is literally a cross between, I'd say, two of some of the best amateur wrestlers that I've seen. He has the power of someone like Taz from his human suplex machine days and just the strong amateur skills of someone like Kurt Angle himself. It, b believe it or not, Cage came up on the short end of things and the, the monster Matanza Cueto was victorious and held on to the Lucha Underground title. So thanks for tuning in for this week's No Gimmicks Podcast update. Please feel free to check out our previous four episodes on our YouTube channel and feel free to subscribe. Also, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and keep on the lookout for the updates on my LinkedIn page as well. Until next time, I'm Todd Smith. Thanks for joining us for this No Gimmicks Podcast update. Y'all take care. Yeah, 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 yeah